Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, thank you very much for giving me an opportunity by way of a video message to address this meeting of the Oeko Institute and its discussions in Brussels that are both very much on our agenda and on our radar. I have known the Oeko Institute for many, many years and I think many of the initiatives that we today call the Green Economy Initiatives have their origins in part also in the work that institutes such as the Oeko Institute have undertaken over the last few decades. We are in the midst of a financial and economic crisis. We are a few weeks away from perhaps the most important international or multilateral treaty negotiation in the history of international cooperation. The climate change meeting in Copenhagen is truly a moment in which the world is challenged but also tasked with finding a fundamentally new answer to the future of our economic development scenarios and particularly how we can work together as an international community. All this is embedded in a global economy, a global economy that has become accustomed to trading with each other, to having comparative advantages, to also invest in innovation and in technology. Climate change is a challenge to the way we have planned and implemented our economic policies over the last 200 years. With six and a half and soon nine billion people on this planet, with global warming, with the loss of ecosystems, with water-stressed countries becoming more the normality than the exception, with natural disasters, with the exhaustion of natural resources, we have to rethink how we are going to implement the future economic growth scenarios that are necessary in order to sustain, on the one hand, the wealthy world, but also to enable the billions in the developing world to reach the kinds of living standards that they are aspiring to. Rethinking our economy of tomorrow in terms of new technologies, more efficiency, less pollution, new jobs, new markets and new opportunities, also new businesses and new financing models is at the heart of this effort. Sustainable industrial policy and also a green economy approach to looking at consumption and production have a long tradition in the international discussions. Indeed, the Marrakesh process has become one vehicle by which nations have sought to work together on some of these resource efficiency and green economy perspectives. We have often been held back from scaling up and accelerating these approaches because there is a doubt, a lingering doubt, I would say today, but fermented by some with particular interests, that this transition is not possible, that we cannot create the jobs that will employ the millions of people who are entering the labor market every year across the whole world, that we cannot make profitable businesses in the context of a green economy. But we know today from all the empirical research, not least through the Oeko Institute, but also the UNEP Green Economy Initiative and many others, that millions of jobs have been created already worldwide in the clean green energy technology economy and indeed in many other sectors related to greater resource efficiency, more sustainable agriculture or indeed a concept that is now becoming essential, namely investing in the ecological infrastructure of our planet. I hope that as you discuss these issues in Brussels, we will take the inspiration and the examples that intrigue, emanate from all parts of the world today. We can look to Korea and to China which are by percentage and by absolute amounts the biggest nations in terms of investing in, ter in ideas such as the Green New Deal as part of the financial and economic recovery packages. Perhaps it is interesting to know that it is in Asia, according to UNEP's latest report we produced together with HSBC, that the biggest investments in the Green New Deal, the transition towards a green economy, have happened over the last 12 to 15 months. Europe has been a leader in terms of environmental policy, in terms of innovation, energy efficiency, renewable energy, and there are some remarkable stories across Europe over the last decade or so. But the question is, can we make that transition into a green economy truly part of the principle in how we will operate our economies in the future? What are the kinds of government policies and regulatory frameworks that markets need in order to make that transition? How do we help those sectors that have invested perhaps in a technology of yesterday but are heavily invested in to make that transition? We cannot simply ignore the fact that jobs have to be maintained. But let us just take the last few months in terms of schemes that have been put in place in the financial recovery packages. We had the idea of cash for clunkers in America or indeed bonuses for selling your old car and buying new ones. Have we missed opportunities here? What signals have we sent to the automotive industry, to the energy industry, to agriculture, to our manufacturing industry that a transition has now become an imperative? Just a few weeks ago, UNEP published the Compendium on Climate Change Science for 2009. Virtually every single paper published since 2007, when the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change produced its fourth assessment report, points towards a more dramatic and more serious situation. Not to make that transition now and to do it in a way where environmental imperatives begin to inform economic development choices 
and drive the development of new policies, new markets, new businesses, new jobs would be an enormously missed opportunity. It is for this reason that we have repeatedly called and produced papers and analysis for the international community under the title of a Global Green New Deal. I truly believe there is no other alternative than an international partnership that recognizes our interdependence as a global economy, but also recognizes our interdependence in terms of addressing challenges such as climate change. Industrial policy, particularly for regions such as Europe, will be at the heart of making that transition happen now, rather than 10 or 20 years, when it may be too late for some, and certainly it would be a lot more expensive. Thank you for giving me a chance to just introduce some of these ideas to your discussion today, and I wish you a very successful meeting. Thank you.